the Dallas Cowboys post-game show is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. A year ago, the Cowboys' season turned south in Atlanta, and today it may have continued its northward flight. Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham, Babe Laufenberg. Dallas beats the Atlanta Falcons today on a last-second field goal, 22 to 19. That's the headline. But as we visit with Cowboys captain Tyrone Crawford, to me, the, the next headline is you took a team that's averaging 32 points a game at home. You gave them 19. You gave them one touchdown. How'd you do that? I mean, it's just it's a testament to, uh, you know, Rob Marinelli and Coach Richard and uh, Bloom, and, you know, all, all our coaches on defense. It's just, just how they've been uh, preparing us um, and, you know, throughout training camp and just, you know, getting our trust into this system and, and being able to, um, you know, run the system the way we do. Um, and, you know, obviously the guys. Uh, we got guys that are passionate about this, and we got guys that, you know, want to hunt. And um, so it's, it's good for this defense, and, you know, just happy to have them beside me and behind me, and it's perfect. And before we begin, Tyrone, you and me good still? Oh, we're good. Because, Brad, I do an event Friday night. I'm oh. seeing an event. He blew right by me like I was an offensive tackle. He's a superstar MC up there, you know. <laughs> I sit next to him for three hours every Sunday. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. I know what you dealt, what well, you were dealing yeah, with. I, trust I appreciate that, Brad. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a compliment, right? <laughs> it, now, absolutely. Hey, the big thing was, Tyrone, up until obviously Atlanta's last drive there, uh, you guys kept them out of the end zone. They kept knocking, knocking, knocking. Why has this red zone defense been so good? It's just the men, you know, the men that we got on the field. Um, obviously, play calling, but you know, the men that we got on the field, man. Uh, you know, they, they don't they don't want to let them in. We don't we don't want to let people into the end zone. And you know, that's the mindset we have. Um, you know, when it happens, it's usually a mistake on our end. Um, so you know, to to you know be down there and you know know that it's in our hands and um, that we can get the job done as men. It's 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 one man versus another man or one man versus two men. You know, what I'm saying uh, whatever we got to do to get the job done, we get it done. And um, you know, we fight. And with the injuries on the defensive line, especially to the defensive tackles, obviously, this week, hmm. you're in, out, you're in flux. It's like one minute you're lining up one spot, the next game, okay, Tyrone, we need you over here. Hmm. What does that do to your game, never getting real comfortable in terms of which position you're playing? Well, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, I have to do the job that uh, I'm, I'm called for. You know, a lot of the... Uh, uh, the reason why I was brought back, you know, onto this defense, you know, under Marinelli is because I can do those type of things. So, um, you know, in the situation that it is now, uh, we, we needed a, a guy that could play three and end and uh, be able to, you know, give enough rest to everybody so we can keep it rolling. And, you know, I, you know, luckily I can I can do that. Obviously, it's not it's not ideal. You don't want to move back and forth. It kind of throws off your rhythm mm -hmm. and you're in, in like like. D, playing D line against an O lineman, it's a chess game. You're trying to make moves to set up the move, the, right. your next move. So when you can't do that, you know it, it obviously um, doesn't work out to your favor all the time. But you know, it, all we want to do is win game. All I want to do is win games. So um, you know, whatever I got to do to get that done, um, I'm gonna do it. And you know, I, I'm, I'm so late in my career now. I'm getting old. <laughs> that, uh, Slow I, down. That's what I need, man. I need, I need wins. I need wins. There you go. Slow down. You're not going anywhere yet. Uh, oh, no. But uh, except maybe to play more than 16 games this year. It's close. Crawling, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But Washington lost. You're playing for something on Thursday. What What does that mean after the start? That you, had? Um, you know, I feel like uh, the way we go in, we're always playing for something. If it's pride, you know, whatever it is. But uh, we're definitely going in um, same mentality. Um, we, we got this hunting mentality right now, and you know the way Van Der Esch and Smooth, and Jalen Smith, are playing, and you know, and then our front line and our, and our corners and safeties. The way we're all playing, man, it's, just, it's, it's fun. It's really fun. So, um, you know, I'm excited to get into uh, you know this Thursday game and on to the you know the next and next and next. But I'm, I'm just I'm always happy to get on the field with this defense. Right, congratulations on the win. Good way, Thank, Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Cowboys post game Appreciate show continues in a moment. Welcome back to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Brad Sham, Babe Laufenberg, Cowboys post-game show. 
thrilling 22 to 19 win for the Cowboys today. I don't know if there's a much better feeling for a fan than to watch your kicker kick a walk off game winning field goal. Imagine being the kicker. Now imagine being that <laughs> kicker and missing an extra point earlier in the game. Is that do you think about the last kick when you're lining up for this one? And if you don't, why not? Uh, I don't. You know, I think it's taken me a while to, to be able to do that. Uh, but I try and do what I need to do to give myself the best chance in that moment. Um, and no matter what happens, good, bad, or indifferent before that, um, to just kind of lock in and, and stay in the moment and do what I need to do then. When you were standing on the sideline and they're running that last series, what were you saying to yourself about how close – you wanted him to get it, and how big was getting it toward the left hash? Uh, that one ended up being dead middle. Um, so that was, I mean, uh, preferably get it on the left hash, but that's one of those things where if it's on the right hash, it's still my job to make it, and, and I'd be ready to do that. You've had two of these this year. You had one against Detroit, and obviously you come back and hit the game winner again today. No one but you and the, as a kicker gets to experience that feeling. So... Tell us what that feeling is like. Uh, when it when it's done uh, afterwards and you get you know mobbed by mobbed <laughs> by the whole team, uh, there in uh, in a team sport like football is, there's not there's not a lot of better feelings um, than that. And and knowing what they went through uh, out there for for the whole four quarters before that, and seeing what they do during the week to be able to uh, to come through for them is that's what it's all about. When you talk about what, seeing what they went through, you know you're only promulgating the myth that kickers aren't real football players. You're talking- <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're one of them. They uh, they go through a lot more uh, physical uh, physical stuff during the game than I do. Well, since you won, uh, what happened on the extra point? I felt like I slipped a little bit, kind of grabbed my grabbed my plant foot, and I just flipped out of it and hit a pretty ugly ball. <laughs> it becomes a hypothetical question, but on that last drive, as Brad was mentioning, obviously you want to you'd like to get it to the one yard line and you go out and you kick a, a 19 yard field goal. At what yard line or what point did you think you could hit from in, in the dome here? Uh, I told our special teams coach 43, 44 yard line. Uh, I felt like I had a good shot. So so we're um, talking 60, 61 yard field goal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so they got way too many in, yards for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind where it ended up. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, I felt like, uh, yeah, I felt like I had that in me. So opening the roof didn't affect anything? Uh, really just kind of affected the feeling of, of down on the field. Uh, but really the balls weren't moving uh, too much. So it was, it was more of kind of a perception than, than anything else and just trusting, trusting your line and trying to hit a good ball. You know, and players, obviously, again, as Brad Sam said, you're not a player. And I'm going to look into the camera, and I always tell people, people say, well, kickers aren't players. There aren't five guys on the fo- on any football team who want the pressure that a kicker has. So I'm going to just go on record <laughs> as saying that. Defensive tackle, they miss a play, nobody knows, right? Kicker, you're in the, the limelight every second, and you obviously have the game winners. That being said, it's a short week. Mm-hmm. Does it change at all for a kicker here when you got to come back, kick on Thursday in terms of your routine? Uh, the only thing that will change is you know there there will be less balls to hit during the week um and you feel like you need to hit a certain amount though to get you ready i don't really um i'll make sure we're sharp on tuesday get a good work day in there and then from tuesday tuesday will be like our friday and it'll be that same 48 hour kind of routine for me and um and we'll, we'll be ready to go. Okay. All right, Brett, congratulations. Yep. Thanks for the time. Enjoy the All right. Enjoy the I always appreciate it, guys. Right All right, thank you. Brett Maher, you. Cowboys Thanks, Post Game Show, continues in a moment. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Leighton Van Der Esch Show. <laughs> uh, we also call it the Cowboys Post Game Show. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. And uh, another huge role for uh, the Cowboys Linebacker, the NFC Defensive Player of the Week, follows that up with another game full of huge plays, another interception. The interception was really a critical play in the game. Did you feel it being a big momentum changer when you picked that one off? Uh, yeah, I think anytime you get a turnover on the defense, it's, it's a big momentum booster. So uh, for the offense to go right down and, and march down and, and put that one in the end zone again, uh, that was awesome. Some people think that um, it looks easy. The way the game is coming to you, you've said, "I'm just doing what they brought me here to do." Mm-hmm. Did you expect to be this successful this soon? I mean, yes and no. Uh, 
you got you to take things as they come, but, I mean, you got to put it behind you and keep preparing every single week and, and just being consistent. I'm trying to be the most consistent player I can possibly be and, and knowing that my teammates can count on me to, to make those big plays and, and to be there on the ball every single every single snap. And I like the way you don't pick the easy ones off. Carson Wentz hadn't thrown an interception in forever. Matt Ryan came into today. Uh, he'd had one interception in his last basically 300 passes. You got him today. But this was a little different. Last week you read the eyes. You picked it off. This ball comes out of Calvin Ridley's hands. Yep. You're driving to go make the tackle, and yep. all of a sudden the ball's at you. So how do you react to that? Just being, just, just having quick reaction skills, uh, I guess. But were you not? Uh, you coming in to make a tackle, I, right? I was coming in to make the tackle. Um, but just, I mean, things happen. You got to be ready for it. You got to be ready. You got to be on your toes. You got to, you got to expect maybe the ball to come out and to be there. So, uh, not, not being shocked. Don't flinch. I mean, you never want, you never want, you never want to flinch. So, uh, just, just expecting it. Did you I think the problem was he flinched, by the way. Yeah, no, no, quite, no, <laughs> quite well, he did. He did. Yeah. He knew you were there. He shorted on the ball a little bit. Um, did, did you guys talk about um, anything specific about what it was going to take? From your side of the ball today, this was a team that was averaging scoring 32 points at home. You held them to one touchdown. What'd you talk about during the week about what the mission was? Stopping the run, doing what we do, just just being that defensive unit, uh, being relentless every single play, and Overextended. being resilient, knowing that they're going to get their plays and, and being able to bounce back. Uh, like I said, I mean, we got a young group of guys, uh, but we take pride in being on the ball and, and playing fast. So uh, it's fun playing with those guys. Love every single bit of them. Um, it's it's fun. It's a fun time on game day. And Leighton, Atlanta is a team built to throw the ball. They've got an MVP quarterback. They drafted a first-round receiver this year. They've got Julio Jones. The list kind of goes on and on. But it looked like at one point in the second half they said, you know, we're going to run the ball a little bit yeah. on these guys. Did that surprise you when they kind of turned to the running game a little more? No, we were expecting it. We knew it was coming. Why do you uh, say that? I mean, it, it's just that's just how they are. Uh, I mean, the coaches gave us a heads up and knew that, that they were their going to coaches or your coaches? Uh, <laughs> our, our coaches. So uh, just being prepared. Now we got news. Yeah, just just playing situational football. No one's coming, and and that's that's half the that's half the way to make plays. No one's coming and, and anticipating. Have you played on Thanksgiving before? And I'm interested in your thoughts about it's a big traditional thing, of course, for the Cowboys to play on Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm interested in your thoughts about your first Cowboys Thanksgiving Day game. Yeah, uh, I haven't played on Thanksgiving before uh, yet, so I mean it'll be pretty neat. We got a short week uh, coming, so ahead of us, uh, we got to get in tomorrow uh, and correct our mistakes and get on the field again and, and get some walkthroughs going uh, and start preparing for for Washington. Something tells me the Vander Esch Express is going to be here on Thanksgiving with a little turkey in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be here. Uh, they left it here in, in, at a friend's house uh, oh. from the last game, so uh, yeah. It'll be here for sure. Nice. Right. Congratulations on the Thanks, win. Lady. Thanks very much for the time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. Leighton Van Der Esch, Cowboys postgame show continues in a moment. Welcome back to Atlanta. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg on the Cowboys postgame show. Thrilling 22-19 win for the Cowboys. Cole Beasley, another huge uh, role in this game. And the, two of your catches, I think, were... Crucial. One of them set up one score. He had another one, a big one in the in the late drive. How, how were they playing you? What were they doing? And and what did you think was was available for you? Um, you know, Linan did a good job of, of giving me some opportunities late, and um, I had one on one uh, on the third down catch. Um, I don't know if that was like probably the third to last drive of the game. Um, and Deck did a good job of finding me and um, got it down there, and then Z got it in. So. Um, just trying to redeem myself from my earlier mishaps. Well, that doesn't happen to you very often. Did yeah. I, how long did it take you to let that go? Uh, well, I let it go pretty pretty early because because of that. Um, I was I was just surprised. Really, it was, it was more like a wow moment for me. Um, it, it definitely hurt me, but you got to move on and and make plays when it comes to you. And you see, you make those catches. The one against the Blue a Giants, you catch it off your helmet. Last week against right. Philadelphia, you got a corner route, a guy draped on you, come up. And so for the young receivers out there, and I mean this, for the young high school kids and their playoff football, is it just a matter of concentrate, just taking your eyes off it for a second? Because obviously your hands don't fail you. I don't know, because I didn't, I don't think I took my eyes off okay. that one. I really don't. Um, I feel like I watched that one all the way in. For some reason, it just didn't stick. Um, I, don't, I don't really know what happened, but 
those things do happen, I guess. <laughs> well, I'll get to the good thing. Yeah. That was third and seven. You picked up 17. That's one I think you got man covered. Yeah. Do you ever get an appreciation? I'm assuming you don't during the game, but Zeke Elliott comes in and picks up a blitzing linebacker right up the middle. That gave Dak time to kind of get you on that deeper cross. Oh, no, you ever no, see that, or will yeah, it be in the yeah. film where you say, hey? No, no question. I mean, every guy's job matters. I mean, if, if they don't block up front, we don't even get an opportunity. So we have a great appreciation for those guys, and, and we know what they do for us. So. Um, we got to make our plays when it comes to us. That's why it hurts you so bad when you don't make one. <laughs> well, uh, when they scored, minute 52 left, and I said to Bay, well, they're right where they want them. Go ahead, Dak, just go take up all the time, drive down the field, and <laughs> kick the field goal and, and win the game. What Did you look at the clock individually and then as a group and say, oh, okay, this is right where we need to be? Uh, no question. I mean, the game's tied. Um, you know, if you want anybody to have the ball in that situation, it's us. We've been in that situation, you know, tons of times. We like to be, we like to have our back against the wall, and and uh, you know, we have all the faith in the world and the guys in our unit to make those plays down the stretch, and we did today. Now we're just talking to Layton. He hasn't played the Thanksgiving Day game. You're an old right. veteran now, uh, and you know exactly how to get ready. And now it's for a share of the division lead, and it's Washington and all. <laughs> all of that what what will the week be like and how much more exciting will it be for you guys having won the game and having something real big to play for well it's 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 a short week so the main thing is just trying to get everything in mentally and then also taking care of your body at the same time um, you got to spend probably some extra probably some longer hours during those days um, but I mean, it's what you got to do when it was such a short week like that. It's hard to bring your body back that quick, but something we're called on uh, upon as the pros. So. Excuse me. Uh, this week, too, you've, uh, it's a short week, but it's a divisional opponent that you saw just a couple of weeks ago. Does that make it a little bit easier during that, the week that, for preparation? That helps a little bit mentally, um, for sure. The physical aspect is probably the harder harder part of it, especially, you know, like you said, when it's a division opponent. So, um, But, you know, Garrett does a good job of with uh, – with us for that, so we'll see. All right, congratulations, big win. Sure. Enjoy the ride in yeah. the short week. Thank, Thank you, Cole. <laughs> Cole Thank Beasley. You, Cole. We'll wrap things up when the Cowboys post game show continues. <laughs> Welcome back to Atlanta, Dallas 22, Atlanta 19, in thrilling walk off fashion. <laughs> it, it makes the week you you played. It, it makes the week a lot more fun and easier to prepare for and to anticipate, doesn't it, when you've uh, won that game? And, and now there's something on the line. Oh, what a big game this has turned into, obviously, with the Washington loss. What would Bucky Dent say about this, Brad Champ? Sometimes you, when you think you're in, you're out. And just when you think you're out, you're in. And everybody thought the Cowboys were out a couple of weeks ago. Now you have two wins. You string back-to-back -back wins together for the first time. Uh, Philadelphia, obviously impressive going up to Philly. You've beaten, no, no matter how they're playing this year, you beat the world champs. But to come in and, and beat an Atlanta team that was playing pretty good football, had won three of their last four, that was impressive. The uh, great Bucky Dent said those words to me in the bar <laughs> of the Fister Hotel in Milwaukee <laughs> one, one <laughs> night I'll, many I'll years ago. That story. Yeah, you will. But yeah, meanwhile, okay. happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your week. <laughs> Babe and I will talk to you from AT&T Stadium Thursday on the Cowboys postgame show. The Dallas Cowboys post-game show was brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Want to tour AT&T Stadium? For more information, call 817-892-TOUR.